CEO as an entrepreneur, and now you're a venture capitalist. What's your favorite part about being a venture capitalist? Um, n uh, not being a venture capitalist. <laughs> uh, I, I actually still have a hard time defining myself as a venture capitalist because I think I suffer probably from the same, um, the same limited definition of venture capitalist that many people do. Uh, I always thought of venture capitalists as professional investors. I'm not a professional investor. I'm a company builder. Um, at my heart, I'm still an entrepreneur. Uh, I team with entrepreneurs to try to build great businesses from terrific opportunities and to develop talent uh, that can be important and influential in entrepreneurship on an ongoing basis, to build great CEOs who have legs in their, not just their businesses, but in the industry as a whole. That's still what I do. John Doerr would say, that's a venture capitalist. If that's what a venture capitalist is, I love doing that. And I've always done it. Um, if being a venture capitalist is sitting around with a sharp pencil trying to figure out what the ROI is on an investment, uh, I'm not that, and I, have, uh, and, and I have no intention of being that. What are some of your favorite, personal favorite, uh, Kleiner portfolio companies right now? No. Well, I, you know, you love all your children, right? Um, I was just meeting with a company that I um, we funded last spring that I, I really enjoy called Aggregate Knowledge. Uh, Paul Martino and Chris Law, terrific entrepreneurs, who have built this this wonderful technology platform for what I think is going to be a big area, emerging area called discovery. It's the it's the antidote to search. Um, where search is about trying to find something you know is out there, discovery is about um, finding those things that you didn't know were out there. And that actually takes a lot of sophistication from a, from a technology standpoint, product and service standpoint to do. I think at Aggregate Knowledge, we've got it. I think we know how to do it, and I think we've got the, the right platform, the right people, and the right vision to accomplish what I hope will be the next big platform on the web. Discovery. Um, I, Presto, which is a wonderful product that we incubated here, that uh, product and service. Essentially, it's a, the, the challenge there was to figure out how to, um, in, how to include the 30 to 50 million people in the United States alone who don't use email or don't like using computers, even if they've got them into the lives of their extended families who are now very digital and very web-based. And we came out with a um, computerless printer, which is, can be addressed um, directly uh, by, through a web service that we've created that allows friends and family through a whitelist to be able to send them emails, photos, and to include them in, a, um, in, in the uh, in the web itself by allowing them to get um, printouts of web pages and information that are in the internet on a regular basis on things that are important to them, whether it's the news, whether it's travel, whether it's their medications. And the product is wonderful um, and is just taking off very, very nicely. We just launched it in, in, in December. HP has partnered with us on making the hardware and we run this fabulous um, service that allows you to build this newsletter every day that when you wake up in the morning, on your machine is a newsletter from friends and family with the information that you care about. Um, 25 years ago, if you mm -hmm. went to the mailbox, you had letters there from friends and family. Today, all you've got is junk mail. If you go to your email today, it's going to be a mixture of business and spam and maybe some information or communications from people that you want to hear from. But but in an environment that is chaotic and unfocused and unpleasant. We think this could actually turn out to be the new mailbox, the place where you go to for, um, for those communications with friends and family that matter, that you, want to, that you want to be able to exhale and read and spend time with, rather than deal with in the clutter of the internet.
You could also imagine interesting discovery elements there. Too. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. People sending each other things. We're seeing that today already with uh, with the, the content that we're putting up there that people can, can forward to each other. Great. Randy, what are some of the areas that you're investing in today? What's hot? What's the next big areas? We talked a little bit about how Kleiner comes up with some of the big trends for the years. What are you looking for? Unprofitable now? podcasting, I think. Yeah. <laughs> We're doubling down on that. <laughs> Actually, our pod show, our pod show business is doing quite, quite oh, nicely with, uh, with Ron, Ron, uh, Ron Bloom and Adam Curry. Yeah. Very nicely. I don't make it. Um, so there's hope for you guys. There's hope. <laughs> uh, I, first of all, there's no percentage in, in our disclosing that, and so we don't. Um, I know lots of people like to talk about where they're investing. We don't. And the reason is that we spend a lot of time and hard work figuring out where we're going to invest, and it's not in our best interest to, um, to open up the doors to a bunch of fast followers. That being said, there's a lot of things that we're doing that are very public. And, um, and, I, and we still very much believe in those areas, whether it is clean and renewable energy, green technologies. I think that is an area that we've, we're very stealth on for a very long time, for many years. Um, People may think that we're recently come to this to this business, but we've actually been investing. We probably almost have 20 investments already. We've been investing for several years and only went public with it when it became clear to us that others were quickly jumping into the area and we needed people to know that we were seriously engaged here. Um, personalized medicine is a big deal. Mm -hmm. The idea that we're now going to be able to uh, create drugs on the fly and um, and treatments on the fly based upon the genetic structures of the people who are going the, the patients is a big deal and we've been investing in that area for quite a while um, infectious diseases we built a pandemic fund this time last year to invest exclusively in dealing with the phenomena of infectious diseases on a global basis and the fact that we are, our infrastructures today from diagnosis and, and, um, and, and surveillance all the way through treatment are poorly um, structured around the, the, the sort of challenge that a pandemic can create. And, uh, and so we've been investing very actively in, the area, in that area. In places like the web and in mobile, um, we, we would love to find the next big content, media, play, but I would say we spend much more of our time looking for the next platform, for the next user experience that's going to be transformative for the way in, people, way in which people interact in these environments, not for the next piece of, of, of content that may you know, captivate people for a month or a year or whatever. <laughs> Great. Jeez, Randy, thanks so much. It's a wrap. Thanks a lot. It's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs>